Hi everyone. To start with, I'd just like to say thanks to Carl Bartlett for his um, comments, uh, which he sent to me a few days ago, and also for requesting this video. So this one is about Arduino timing. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have an LED and you want the Arduino to turn it on for one second and then turn it off for one second, you're going to need to use some sort of timing. Um, and it's quite important because if you're going to do other things like um, transmit data to an LCD screen, for example, whilst using the ADC, whilst transmitting data or whatever, you're going to need to effectively manage the Arduino's time. For example, let's consider a data logging system. Maybe you want to read the, read the ADC every millisecond, because maybe you're trying to measure something like, um, I don't know, the voltage of an AC wave or something like that. So you'll need to measure it every millisecond or so. But while you're doing this, you've also got to remember that you've got other tasks to do too. Like, uh, like I just mentioned about an LCD screen, maybe you want to update that. But maybe you want to update that every second. So, yeah, so you've got a script or a sketch or whatever it's called an Arduino. Um, which has got to do two separate things um, basically at the same time. So you've got the ADC which has got to be polled every millisecond but you've got to update the screen once a second. So yeah, timing in the Arduino is really important. So anyway, we've got three different um, words, uh, keywords if you like, which I feel are important to understanding timing in the Arduino. So, um, these are the keywords you can use in your code. There's delay, millis, and micros. And I'm going to explain what these are and uh, why they're important, what they're for. So, um, what are these things then? So, delay. Um, the keyword delay, um, it's actually pause, really. It's like pause. So, if you've got a, a sketch or a script um, and you add in the delay keyword, it basically delay pauses the whole thing, the whole program for however milliseconds you say. So, so if you say delay, um, open and close parentheses and a thousand in the middle, um, it will pause the whole program for 1000 milliseconds or one second. One of the problems with the delay keyword or the delay method if you like is that it's blocking. And what, it mean, what I mean by blocking is that it effectively blocks the processing of the rest of this, this uh, program. So if you, if you use the delay keyword, it will block the whole lot. It will make the whole program wait for the amount of milliseconds which you specify. So delay isn't the best uh, to use in all situations for managing time with the Arduino, but it does have its uses. So if you've got one process, and maybe it's something like switching an LED on or something like that, you could uh, switch the LED on, you could put a delay of a thousand milliseconds, then you could switch the LED low and then another delay and then repeat. That's fine, a delay is fine there because when it gets to delay and it blocks, that's fine because it's not actually blocking anything from happening anyway, because all it's doing is switching an LED on or off. So a delay there will be fine. But if you were to put a delay in when you were um, maybe reading an ADC or something like that, while doing other things like write to the LCD screen, delay would be a problem because delay would block access to the LCD code. So if you were reading an ADC and then using a delay, well, maybe there's something else the Arduino should be doing instead of just pausing, basically. So yeah, delay is like a generic Arduino-wide pause, and that's what it's used for. So if you're doing any multitasking in with your Arduino, uh, then delay probably isn't going to be a good idea. So let's move on. So these two here, uh, millis and micros, so what are these? Um, millis, this is from a Latin word which is mille, and um, that means a thousand. So millis means thousand and basically it's thousandths of a second so uh, milliseconds millis milliseconds a thousandth of a second um, uh, a second so millis thousandth of a second 
And micros is, uh, it's from a Greek word, I think it's mikros or something, which means small. But anyway, that's a millionth of, oops, a millionth of a second. And um, millis and micros have really useful uh, uses, that doesn't, sounds a bit silly, doesn't it? But they have really good uses in Arduino. So when it comes to the timing, if you want um, any reliable uh, timing algorithm in the Arduino, you really need to be using millis or micros. So um, to start with, what are these? So okay, millis is a millisecond, thousandth of a second, micros is a millionth of a second. Okay, but from when though? It's from the start of the Arduino. So when the program first starts running, this value is zero. So these two uh, start at zero. So when you first turn the Arduino on, these are zero. And then what happens is every millisecond after the Arduino is turned on, this gets incremented. So increments every one millisecond. From the time when you turn the Arduino on and it starts running the sketch or the script, a value automatically increments by one millisecond and that's this millis value here or this uh, method here. When you call it, it returns the value in milliseconds from the time the Arduino was started. So if you were to turn the Arduino on and then call this millis function exactly one second after you've turned it on, the millis function would return 1,000 1, milliseconds. And if you were to poll it, this millis function five seconds after the Arduino has been turned on, it would return 5,000 milliseconds. And that's the way it works. And of course, micros is the same. So um, if you were to poll it 10 seconds after you've turned it on, this micros function, it would return 10 million because there's 10 million microseconds passed since the time the Arduino was powered on. And that's how it works. So now we need to know a little bit more about this uh, in order to make any use of it. Okay, so something I need to mention about these millis and micros functions is that they use a variable type called unsigned long. So unsigned long. So unsigned long, what exactly does that mean? Unsigned means that it's positive only, so you can only have a number greater than zero. Sorry, uh, yeah, greater than zero. Well, equals are greater than zero. So unsigned means greater than zero, basically. In other words, no minus. It doesn't store a minus value, which makes sense because, um, you know, time since the Arduino was started, minus something doesn't make sense. So anyway, unsigned equals or greater than zero. That's what unsigned means. And long simply means that um, the variable holds uh, 32 bits to store its value. And 2 to the power of 32 is around about 4 billion or something crazy. Um, so it can store that amount of numbers. So basically it will go up to about 4 billion and then it will um, it will overflow and overflow means that it will just start again so um, yeah so um, there are the basics of millis and micros so now how do we use it right so I'm not going to go into micros anymore I'm going to leave micros at that but basically micros and millis uh, you use them the same way and they do pretty much the same thing only they have different levels of precision um, according to time but I'm going to be focusing on millis Okay, so I'm going to do this in pseudocode. Um, so this isn't any particular language, but it's just, um, you know, an idea, a way of uh, conveying the information across. So to start with, let's say we've got three tasks. We've got task A, task B, and task C. So um, we need to set the interval. So A interval, A interval equals, let's say, 250 milliseconds. 
And then we'll set B interval. And we'll do that every 500 milliseconds. And we've got C interval. And that can be every 1000 milliseconds, okay? So these are just um, variables with integers. Um, so int. And then we need to know the time A was last run, which I'm going to set to zero. B last run, and that's going to be zero. And C last run. So when were they last run? It's just a, a way to check. They were all last run um, at zero milliseconds, which is the default value. Then we need to set another variable, millis now. And that can be zero as well. Then we've got the loop start. So, um, yeah, the loop start. <coughs> and down here we'll have loop end. So this is going to be inside the Arduino loop. Um, so, the first thing we want to know is, you know, what's the millis now? So, millis... Millis now equals the millis function. So that gets the amount of milliseconds since the Arduino was turned on. So millis now now equals that, whatever that is. And then all we need to do is if if millis now if millis now is greater than um, the time it was last run. So if millis now is greater than the last time run, which is there, a last run, whoop, and the interval. So if we say, um, yeah, plus the interval, and put that in brackets to save any confusion. So if millis now is greater than a last run plus interval, so to start with, the last run was zero, and the interval is 250. So if we've just turned this on, millis now will be zero milliseconds. So if millis now, which is zero, is greater than the last run, which is zero, and interval, which is 250, then it's not going to run, is it? Because it's not due. So the only time that would run is if millis now um, is greater than, well, of course, the time it was last run and the interval. So if the time last run was uh, 250 milliseconds and the milliseconds now is 500, then it will run. It could, you could say equals or greater there actually, but yeah, so if it's time to run it, then run. Then run A. Okay, so having run A, we need to now set the last run time. So A last run equals whatever millis now is. And um, we'll end we'll end it there. So um, it's quite simple. So there's the first part. And now we pretty much just repeat that for all the rest of them. So okay and um, really that's all there is to it. That's uh, the way to manage time in the Arduino. So yeah um, you basically use this, this is the critical uh, line here. If millis now is equals or greater than the last run plus the interval that you want, then run. And then of course update the last run. And this is how I manage time in, in, my, um, in my programs that I write for the Arduino. And it's very effective. And um, yeah, you can run them simultaneously this way. And um, it's completely flexible, you can change the intervals. Um, and it should all work perfectly. So that's how I do it. So hopefully um, this video was interesting for you. I'll just zoom in so you can have another look. Yeah, so hopefully you found this video useful. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.